about the polling too, Joe, because it was predicting a very tight race and yet it was anything but, in the end, a comprehensive win to the president. So will there now be a rebuke, do you think, to the pollsters? Well, you know, I mean, polling is just not credible when it's released publicly in that way. I mean, you know, this is the third election in a row involving Donald Trump where the pollsters have got it pretty dramatically wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, they, every poll was saying it's too close, except, and I can tell you exclusively, um, the internal polling of the Republican Party. Uh, I just had a meeting with uh, a very senior Democrat uh, who was almost inconsolable and, and a Republican, and the Democrat told me that at 2 o'clock yesterday on, on voting day, he was with a, a very senior donor to the Republican Party who showed him a text from within the Republican Party that said, we are going to win all seven swing states and Donald Trump will claim victory at 3 a.m. That's exactly what happened. And that came from a Democrat. And, and, and you know, I've heard that now from three different sources that the Republican Party polling was extremely accurate and the Democratic Party polling was extremely inaccurate. They were still claiming into the night last night that they were going to win Pennsylvania and they were completely dead wrong. So, you know, there are, there's polling and there's polling. Uh, and frankly, I mean, the, 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 the national polls are now officially a joke. All right, you know the man better than any other Australian. Trump 2.0. We'll expect him to hit the ground running. He's been there before, of course, so he knows very much what to expect from day one behind the desk in the White House. This time, though, he's got a smart and very able vice president-elect in J.D. Vance. MAGA has clearly now locked in the remaking of the Republican Party. So what's this new Trump term going to look like? Well, I think Trump will continue to reach out to the Trump Democrats. The people that voted for him well ahead of the base, the natural base of the Republican Party. And so he will deliver the tax cuts that he's promised, especially now that uh, it looks like they're going to win both the House and the Senate. I think Donald Trump will deliver the tariffs, even though we don't like them. Uh, I, I think he will be uh, much tougher on the border. Uh, but I think also he obviously won't be running for re-election. So this will be a different Donald Trump. Uh, there'll be a different focus and a, perhaps a greater focus on legacy. It was quite interesting uh, on, uh, in his uh, victory speech, he said, you know, I've done more than 900 rallies and I had the last one and I'm not doing another one. And, you know, that's kind of like asking Mick Jagger not to do another concert. It's sort of unlike, it's unnatural in a sense, but... I think he, it's real. It, it's exhausting. He is now the uh, oldest ever elected U.S. president, uh, newly elected U.S. president, and uh, and I think he'll he'll be focusing pretty early on on the legacy, and the legacy has to be how to lock in that working class vote for the Republican Party well into the future. Just before we go on the Democrat side, there was a battle royal to get Biden out earlier. The Obamas, of course, slow to endorse Harris. They wanted an open convention. I think they've been proven right. But this shift to the left inside the Democrats and with it, the alienation of their old worker base that's also mirrored here and in the United Kingdom. After the big, this big loss, Joe, what now for the Democrats? Well, it's a great question because... When you go to an election with a coalition that stretches from Liz Cheney to Bernie Sanders, the question is what unites your party, what unites your coalition? And the only thing that united them was they hated Donald Trump. It was as simple as that. Now that coalition is already broken apart. Uh, people are feeding on each other. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a hell of a period for them because there's nothing that holds them together except a hatred of Donald Trump. You can't, you can't build a policy platform, platform based on someone that has just beaten you and beaten you twice in the last 12 years. So now they've got to go back and look at what they, who they really represent. Is it Hollywood? Is it Wall Street? Or actually, are they going to go back to the blue-collar workers of Michigan, of Wisconsin, of Pennsylvania? 
of Arizona and Nevada and, and, you know, North Carolina, are you going to go back to the working class voters that made the Democratic Party? And are you going to reach out to them with policies that actually improve their lives? Joe Hockey, as always, thank you for your time. Thanks, Peter.